Welcome. This is the case report titled, Baby, You Take My Breath Away, written by Scott Matier, Micah Pastula, and Rachel Carter. Peripartum cardiomyopathy is characterized by left ventricle dysfunction in the final month of pregnancy, or within five weeks postpartum. It affects 1 in 2,200 births in the U.S. Preeclampsia is present concurrently in up to 68% of patients with peripartum cardiomyopathy. Preeclampsia with severe features is characterized as preeclampsia plus a blood pressure greater than 160 over 110 or addition of severe features. Treatment consists of blood pressure control, magnesium for eclampsia prevention, and expedient delivery. This case demonstrates that the medical management for preeclampsia with severe features can worsen patients with peripartum cardiomyopathy. There is a significant overlap in the signs and symptoms of these diseases. Echocardiogram and ProBNP can help to differentiate and expedite diagnosis. In this case, point-of-care ultrasound was able to make the critical diagnosis at bedside. A 21-year-old previously healthy prima gravida at 35 weeks gestation was admitted for preeclampsia with severe features. She was given labetalol for blood pressure control, betamethasone for fetal lung maturation, and magnesium 4 grams IV bolus for eclampsia prevention. The patient immediately became nauseous and vomited after receiving the magnesium bolus. Her blood pressure normalized and it was noticed that her SpO2 had decreased to 75% as well as her mental status decreasing. When this change was realized, the lungs were auscultated, revealing crackles in the bilateral lung bases. She was immediately given 15 liters O2 via non-rebreather, which was titrated to 7 liters high-flow nasal cannula. Cardiology and echo technicians were out of the hospital for the weekend. The inpatient team was contacted and the family medicine attending performed an echocardiogram at bedside. Her ejection fraction was diminished at 39% with concurrent pulmonary edema. The patient's pro-BNP was elevated at 6,700. Of note, the patient's father developed congestive heart failure after cardiac arrest at 39 years old. After discovery of this diagnosis, the patient was transferred to a higher level of care. These videos were taken from the ultrasound at the time of patient evaluation and demonstrate diminished left ventricular contractility. The left ventricle is normally hyperdynamic in pregnancy. This graph demonstrates the timetable for changes in vital signs with key interventions. Of note, the patient's oxygen saturation began at 92% on room air. Her oxygen saturation dropped sharply with administration of labetalol and magnesium. This did not improve until administration of oxygen. There appears to be a close relationship between decrease in blood pressure and drop in oxygen saturation. This data was collected and preserved via the external fetal monitoring strip. This image was taken from the ultrasound at the time of patient evaluation. The family medicine attending utilized bedside echo to obtain images of the heart in multiple different views and noted clear evidence of global left ventricular dysfunction, specifically images of the mitral valve excursion in the parasternal long axis view were used to obtain measurements needed to calculate an endpoint septal separation, or EPSS. The EPSS was used to estimate an ejection fraction of 39%. Ultrasound was also utilized to evaluate the lung fields, and notable for the presence of numerous beelines in the bilateral lung fields, suggesting the presence of pulmonary edema. These bedside ultrasound findings, along with grossly elevated pro-BNP, were very suspicious for peripartum cardiomyopathy. The patient delivered a healthy baby by vaginal delivery. Pulmonary embolism, infection, and cardiac ischemia were ruled out. The patient further decompensated after delivery, requiring BiPAP with 80% FiO2 and ICU admission. A repeat echocardiogram hours later showed worsening of ejection fraction to 20% with a nearly akinetic left ventricle. The patient was eventually discharged on standard CHF treatment. A follow-up echocardiogram showed some recovery of ejection fraction to 45 to 50 percent. Peripartum cardiomyopathy incidence has doubled in the United States since the 1990s. It's important to quickly recognize this disease process as there is overlap with preeclampsia with severe features. Common discomforts of pregnancy, including shortness of breath and edema, can also be easily overlooked. 
Peripartum cardiomyopathy causes systolic left ventricular dysfunction. However, hypertension-induced pulmonary edema is caused by diastolic dysfunction. ProBNP is also much more elevated in peripartum cardiomyopathy than in preeclampsia with severe features. This patient has a family history of dilated cardiomyopathy. Ongoing study of PPCM reveals it to be a subset of genetic dilated cardiomyopathy. Based on the timeline of the patient's vital signs changes, it appears that her decompensation was caused at least in part by our interventions. Labetalol is a negative inotropic agent with known potential to exacerbate acute decompensated heart failure. While circulatory function in heart failure relies on sympathetic stimulation, beta blockade further depresses myocardial contractility. Beta blockers have long-term mortality benefits for patients with heart failure with reduced EF, but they're typically initiated after full recovery from acute decompensated state. Treatment with high-dose magnesium and steroids likely also contributed to her hemodynamic compromise. This patient had suggestion of cardiopulmonary compromise that were unrecognized before treatment. She had a baseline tachycardia of 110 to 120 beats per minute and a baseline oxygen saturation of 90%. While it may seem overly cautious to screen all patients with preeclampsia for PPCM prior to medication administration, it is prudent to rule out PPCM in patients who have cardiopulmonary manifestations of preeclampsia. Point of care ultrasound is sensitive and specific for identifying reduced left ventricle ejection fraction. ProBNP is usually normal in pregnancy with mild elevation in pre-E. It can reliably be used to differentiate between pre-E and PPCM. Nifedipine immediate release and hydralazine have also been approved for use for acute severe hypertension in pregnancy. They are case reports of nifedipine causing hypotension when combined with IV magnesium. Therefore, hydralazine remains as a safe alternative until peripartum cardiomyopathy has been ruled out. In conclusion, we propose that point-of-care ultrasound or ProBNP be used to rule out peripartum cardiomyopathy prior to use of labetalol. Patients with cardiopulmonary symptoms of pre-E with severe features are the intended screening group. Hydralazine can be considered for immediate treatment until evaluation is completed. Thank you.